Good morning, it's William, and we're doing trip number seven today. I am back in Indiana, and I'm going to do my first timber wolf. Tiny house is what I call them. Let's check this thing out. It's kind of funny because me and Robin actually went and looked at these at the um, uh, at all the shows this year, and really liked them. We wish we had probably bought one of these. You know, originally we were going to start this little property thing in Tennessee. This would have been awesome for that. I, I think if you're gonna buy a piece of property on a lake or something and you don't wanna spend a fortune, but you wanna be able to take your kids up there on the weekend and stuff, I think this is the best unit for that. Look at the tires, the aggressive tires on this thing. It's pretty cool. I'm not sure how it's gonna haul because it's like you're hauling a wall down the road, but um, we're all hooked up. We're ready to go. We're actually gonna take this we're taking this run to Billings, Montana, and it's paying $2,359, I think is what it was. Um, I think it's 1,380 miles. I'm kind of curious what we're gonna get for fuel mileage on this one. But anybody says the, the RV business is dead, you, you wouldn't know by these lots. These lots are all full. There must be 25 or 30 of these sitting over there that need to be delivered just this model alone so there's a there's still a lot of stuff going on um I, I think that they're producing a lot more of this cheaper travel travel trailer stuff um you know to get those people that don't want to spend two hundred thousand dollars so i uh you know unless nobody buys this stuff this year then it'll affect next year but as of right now you know the load board's full they're calling me all the time even when i don't want to work you know they're just let me know there's more work. So I got Robin out of her surgery, got her to her parents' house. She's gonna relax this week. I'm gonna try to do two or three runs. Uh, slept in the truck last night. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> I'm just six foot three. Yeah, had my legs up by my face half the night. It was rough, it was rough. But I'm gonna do it a few times and so I can, you know, give my full opinion on that but you know if you bargain shop you can find some $50 a night hotels and and, and you can make those work you know I pay a little bit more when Robin's with me because I'll stay in some of the uh dives you could say um uh, Robin won't do that <laughs> but um you know we're, we're gonna document this trip this is number seven um I've been to Billings Montana already with one of these went through there on our way to Washington so you know, it's a, it's a route that I've taken before. I'm gonna take a different route this time though. Try to go around Chicago and, and up that way. Um, just a little bit different. We're gonna try a different route because that going through Chicago and Milwaukee and Minneapolis, that's a pain in the butt. So I'm gonna try something different and see how this works. But check that out. Been to this lot. This is the second time I've been to this lot now. Got all these here and they got all those timber wolves over there, another row over there, another row over there, so. Kind of gives you an idea what's going on. I got everything torqued, air pressures checked, all the doors locked on it. Uh, went inside, checked everything's there, got the battery hooked up, got the whole hitch, got the lock, the breakaway. You know, everything looks like it's ready to rock and roll. So, hopefully these don't fall off. It was a little cold this morning. So, probably be going down the road at 70 mile an hour and those things will be flying down the road so i think they cost like 50 bucks to replace them so let's hope i don't lose none but we'll be back with the rest of this trip well i've been hauling this timber wolf travel trailer for about three hours now um i'm gonna give you my first impressions of this because i would rather be hauling our riverstone right now that Riverstone's 43.7 feet long, weighs 19,000 pounds all loaded up with everything, and pulls easier, nicer, and gets better fuel mileage than this Timberwolf that weighs 7,000 pounds. So now I know why nobody was taking this run. <laughs> I am get, literally, I'm getting, well now I'm getting 7.2. I've been getting between seven, five, and eight miles per gallon. That's the worst this truck has ever got hauling anything. But this thing is, when I'm parked next to the semis getting fuel, this thing looks like it's taller than them. I mean, if not, it's right the same size or really, really close because it's crazy. 
but this thing feels like I have a parachute behind me. I'll get going down the road, be doing pretty good, get my fuel mileage. I thought I was going to hit nine miles per gallon, and then the wind would change, and it felt like a, felt like I just was in a drag car, and I let the parachute out because it just grabbed it and slowed it right down to nothing. I was like, this is crazy, crazy, crazy. I, you know, when I when I found this 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 job, I don't even think it said Timberwolf when I was looking in there. It said 27 foot bunch of gibberish letters and numbers and stuff but now now I'm smarter I know what those things mean uh, I think they don't tell you the timber wolf so that you take the job and then you get the job and then <laughs> and, you know once they sent me the paperwork and I clicked on the paperwork and it said timber wolf I'm going I'm going wait a minute I remember something about this and then I just googled it and then I went oh yeah me and Robin actually like these things at least you know if you're having a stationary spot, not hauling it across the country for somebody else, no. But I had to do this little first impression. So if you're gonna get into this line of work, um, and if you wanna pull like a wall or a parachute behind you, then just pick up one of these things and, and haul it because this, that thing, I'm just glad that it's not super, super windy out here, but you, whenever you change on these roads, you, you'll get a side wind or you'll get a wind pushing you, you'll get some kind of wind and you'll watch your fuel mileage you know, change and you're always hoping that you get that tailwind or something that gives you the better fuel mileage. But I'll, I've been going for three hours now and I've had nothing but crap mileage. I have changed my speed anywhere from 55 to 65. I'm doing 62 right now, it's usually where the, this truck does the best. But no, I mean, today I just get to watch my fuel gauge go. And just keep stopping and filling up. So after we get this video all done, we'll tell you what this thing costs. I think this thing's gonna cost as much to just go to Billings as that other one we did took all the way to the coast on in Washington. Because that one pulled so nice. But this one, yeah, this, you know this is here. I mean, don't get me wrong, it, it, it's easy to pull into areas as long as you're, you know, keeping your eye open on top. Um, the move, you know, moving it around in parking lots and everything and following the truck, absolutely perfect. Now, you know, maybe if I had no wind or I had the wind pushing me, then it would do better fuel mileage. You know, we got a long way to go yet, so we'll see. But I thought I'd throw this into the video. So if you're going to get into this, you know, RV transport that you realize what you're getting. Um, this was 27 foot. And I don't even, it didn't even say Timberwolf. It didn't even say that in the uh, description when I first looked at it. But now I know. So, and I know, and that's fine. I mean, this job pays almost $2,400. So, um, the other job that was out there was going to Colorado for 18 something and usually Colorado pays over over two thousand dollars so I, I took this one instead it's paying a buck seventy a mile so I mean that's pretty much the good number there and I'm always trying to get the most miles they had one going to Oregon but I couldn't get I couldn't get Robin back home and get her ready to go for me to leave and somebody beat me to it and that one paid almost four thousand dollars that's the job I actually wanted so but Maybe I'll find something on the way back. But we'll throw some more into this video and we'll be back in a little while. Well, this is home for tonight. I mean, I got pretty lucky because most of the rest areas through Minnesota on your way to South Dakota have lots and lots of room. Probably because it's cold here. <laughs> so, this is where I get to spend the night. Everything looks good. This thing handles fine, it just, you know, 7.2 miles per gallon. So that, that part really sucked, you know. Well, this is what it looks like in the truck at night. Because I'm in my home on the road. I'm sure that I am going to look pretty rough. Because this is what a guy looks like that has slept in a truck for the last two days. Um, yes, I am dragging ass. Uh, I'm one of them guys that usually goes to bed and sleeps like a baby. Not in this truck, I sure don't. So, um, yeah, I'm feeling exhausted. But I got my light on here and I just saved, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks in hotels. But let's just show you these great accommodations here. <laughs> and you can see that I'm a six foot three, so I got this so I don't roll out, basically. So, but this is what it looks like 
and got my iPad for a movie. And if you can see, there's a truck over there. Looks like this guy is getting ready to leave over here. So, but this is home. So if you're gonna get into this line of work, uh, this is how you sleep, I guess. So, I don't know. Now my truck just shut off because it's been running too long. But that's fine, it's warm in here, so we'll let it take a break. But this is the life, hmm? I need to remove all my seats, remove everything, and turn this into two bunk beds back here. This way when Robin goes with me, I'll just sleep on the bottom because she's claustrophobic. So we'll let her have the top. <laughs> oh my God, how did I get myself into this?